no try western life down here in Corpus Christi. Well, sure I know. How are you, Jackson? Pretty good, pretty good. You're all upset over some insurance problem. Well, no, not really. Well, don't tell me you called up just to pass the time of day and on the company's phone bill. No, not that either. Well, then? Uh, tell me, Johnny, did you ever hear of the Padre Island treasure? I never even heard of Padre Island. Wait a minute. Sure. Are you talking about that long strip of sand and stuff out there in the Gulf? That's it. Runs down the coastline from Corpus almost all the way down to Mexico. That's Padre Island, all 115 miles of it. I didn't realize it was that long. It sure is. Now, like you said, that narrow finger of land, uh, sometimes a couple, sometimes 10 or 12 miles off the coast, goes all the way from here down to the northeast corner of Mexico. Uh Uh-huh. And that's why it's going to be so hard to find that old Spanish ship, uh... What remains of it? What are you talking about? Loaded with Spanish doubloons. A lot of solid gold bullion, and heaven knows what else. You mean you want me down there to hunt for treasure? Among uh, other things. Ah, there's a hitch to it. What other things? Pretty good bait, though, isn't it? That treasure fish. What other things, Jackson? Uh, Why don't you come on down here and see? On expense account. That's right, on expense account. Okay, you've asked for it. I'll grab a plane first thing in the morning. CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The Kingston Trio sings for 7-Up. Was you ever in Quebec? Getting thirsty, mighty thirsty, loading timber on the deck. Getting mighty thirsty. Was you ever in New York? Getting thirsty, mighty thirsty. Floating all them barrels of pork. Getting mighty thirsty. Fresh up with seven up. So clean tasting, fresh clean tasting. Fresh up with seven up for a quick refreshing employ. Yes, no matter where you are or what you're doing. When it's break time, take 10 and reach for sparkling 7-Up. It's always 7-Up time, so fresh up with 7-Up. Fresh up with 7-Up. So clean tasting, fresh clean tasting. Fresh up with 7-Up. Get up for a quick refreshing lip, Account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri Western Life Insurance Company office in Corpus Christi. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the perilous Padre matter. Expense account item one $128 even. Plane fare and incidentals to Corpus Christi, Texas. It was late the next morning when I got there, and to my surprise, Jack Price wasn't at the municipal airport to meet me. So I grabbed a taxi, that's item two, a couple of bucks and a half, to the Robert Driscoll Hotel at the corner of Antelope and North Broadway. Checked in, unpacked my bag, cleaned up, and then proceeded to walk over to Price's office in the Cats building. But as I rounded the corner onto Lawrence Street, I passed the big stockbroker's office there, and okay, buddy, you feel this in the middle of your back? I feel it. Then I straight ahead and keep walking. Act natural, see? You think you can get away with this in broad daylight? This here now, 38 caliber Roscoe, is the answer to that. You keep walking or I'll blow a hole in you so big you could shove an expense account through it. Oh, please, consider my poor sick wife and 13 starving children. You think that sob stuff will get you anywhere so you can try it on Big Nick and the rest of the mob. We don't like you Eastern hoods cutting in on our territory, see? You try any fancy capers here in Corpus, and you're going to find out that you're the Corpus, see? Now, that's a funny, so you better laugh, see? Better not laugh. I'm sorry, Doug, but I'm weeping because you'll never make it. Oh, sir, you cut me to the quick. 
I thought that was a pretty good performance <laughs> of the fine old Johnstone tradition. Johnstone tradition. And I'll tell you this. Your brother Jack will never put it in the script when he writes up this case of mine for broadcast. I'm crushed. All kidding aside, Doug, I'm glad to see you. How are you? Fine, Johnny, fine. But why doesn't that brother of mine let me know in advance when you're coming down here? Doug, are you forgetting that he can't dramatize these insurance investigations for the air until after they're done and over with? Well, I, I guess you've got a point there. But how'd you find out so soon? Well, that's just the point, Doug. I didn't. You, you what? Mr. Johnstone, I will have you know that at this moment, I haven't the least idea what I'm supposed to be investigating down here. Hmm. Well, then maybe I have. Oh? You were, um, on your way to Jack Price's office? That's right. Try Western Life over in the... Why, what's the matter? You, uh, won't find him there. Well, where will I... Wait a minute, what goes... Well, Jackson Price and I have been good friends ever since I moved down here, Johnny. I know you have. I guess that's why his wife called me this morning to see if I knew what had happened to him. Now, when she told me that he'd phoned to you last night, asked you to come down here, well, then I wondered if you and he had gone out there together. Gone where, Doug? But when I thought about it and realized you couldn't have got on down here soon enough for the two of you to have gone out there together last night... Doug, gone where? Uh, which wouldn't have made any sense anyway. I mean, going out there at night. Doug. But then, last night was the last she saw of him. Doug, that bush you're beating around. Yeah, yeah. oh, I, I know. Come on, Johnny. You and I had better round up some equipment and get out there without wasting any time. Get out where, Doug? Padre Island. Oh. Yes. And let's hope that... Well, let's hope we find Jackson still alive out there. First major toothpaste advance since fluoride. Westbrook Van Boris announcing new Ipana with hexafluoride. Contains fluoride plus hexachlorophene. Now listen. Gum troubles cause more loss of adult teeth than tooth decay. Gum trouble is often caused by tartar. Thorough cleansing with new Ipana helps prevent this gum trouble because it helps remove soft film on teeth before it hardens into tartar. Help protect your gums as you protect your teeth. Brush as directed with new hexafluoride Ipana. Doug Johnstone spoke of rounding up some equipment. He meant getting hold of the beach buggy, a sort of contraption that was just as much at home on soft sand as on a paved highway. It turned out to be a Jeep with a set of the biggest, fattest tires on it I'd ever seen. Doug borrowed it from a friend of his by the name of Obie O'Brien, who was very, very curious about where we were going and why. Well, I thought I told you, Obie. Johnny here is absolutely nuts about fishing. Oh, sure, Obie. Why else do you think I'd come all the way down here to Corpus Christi? Well, from what I've heard about you, Johnny... Uh... Pile in, Johnny. Uh, we'll see you later, Obi. Uh, sure, but uh, from what I've heard about you, Johnny... From what uh... I've heard, Obi, we ought to have some pretty good luck over in the surf over on Padre. Well, just answer me one thing. If you two are going fishing, where's the tackle? Oh, we'll pick up whatever we need at my place. Well, fishing, huh? Well, what else? Uh, let's go, Johnny. Sure. You, uh, you sure you don't want me along, too? Now, you know that three's a crowd in this rig of yours. Oh, it is, huh? And besides, why should I let you in the secret of all my pet spots over there on the island? Well, okay. Okay, I can take a hint, but I don't believe either of you guys. I mean about going fishing. And I'd still like to know, Doctor... Obie, if curiosity killed people like it's supposed to kill cats, you'd be dead ten times over. So what's wrong with being curious? O'Brien, my boy, it'll only get you into trouble. So what's wrong with a little trouble now and then? <laughs> we'll see you later, Obie. But at Doug's house on Hinman Drive, instead of loading up with fishing tackle... He threw in a couple of long-handled shovels, a couple of jeep cans of extra gas, a can of water, and most important of all, he said, was an old but well-oiled 3030 Winchester and a box of cartridges. It's better throw some shells into it, Johnny. I don't like toting a loaded gun in a car any more than you do, but I think we'd better be prepared for anything. We tore on up to the north end of town, then across the new causeway to Padre Island through the park, then headed south on the so-called highway that stretches from one end of that long, narrow, sandy island to the other. Then, and only then, did Doug tell me what it was all about. And he unfolded one of the most fascinating bits of history I've heard in a long time. 
You see, Johnny, it goes back to the year 1553, when a Spanish treasure fleet, 20 ships or more, set out from Veracruz, Mexico, loaded down with more gold and jewels than you can shake a stick at. The treasure that Jack Price told me about over the phone. Just let me get on to the story. Sure, go ahead. Now, somewhere along the line, they ran into a terrific storm. Mm -hmm. That sent three of those galleons to the bottom, and at least three of them. No wonder there's so much treasure hunting off the lower coast of Florida. Right. Now, some of the ships got through that storm and kept on eastward. But most of them came back westward, hoping to get back to Mexico in safety, maybe to the port of Tampico. Tampico. Right. Now, that's about 400 miles south of here. Uh-huh. Anyhow, they must have hit another storm, because 13 of those treasure ships came aground here on Padre Island. No kidding. A few of the survivors managed to get across from the lower end of it to what is now the Rio Grande Valley town of Port Isabel. I see. And the rest of them made a tasty meal or two for the people who lived on this island. Karen Kawa Indians. They were cannibals. Cannibals? Yeah. Ouch. Anyhow, sometime later, a salvage fleet came on from Spain under the leadership of a Don Angel de la something or other, found most of the wrecks and took the gold off them back home. You say he found most of the wrecks, huh? Uh, one of them, Johnny, with its load of Spanish doubloons and bars of solid gold, is still somewhere under the sands of this island. And Jackson has found out where? Well, one of Jack's clients, a young fellow named Jose Pineda, uh, found a chart in the false bottom of an old wooden chest he was about to throw out. Here on this island? Yeah, according to this chart, it was from it, one of the treasure ships, and... Hey, wait a minute. Whose car is that? Huh? Parked there at the side of the road. Probably just a breakdown. There's nobody around. Go on. Yeah, well, now this chart I was talking about called for taking bearings on a Spanish dagger plant. And the other markers were an old anchor and three heavy brass spikes, all of them, no doubt, buried in the sand. But now, with dagger plants around here by the thousands... Yeah, I wondered about that. Go on, though, Doug. This buried treasure bit's getting to me. Well, you're not the first, believe me. Anyhow, back in the 1840s, a man who'd settled here on the island, he was digging around, he uncovered a chest full of jewelry and gold coins worth over 80,000 bucks. And that was before inflation. Right. But the Civil War came along, brought a lot of naval activity in these waters. So the old man buried all the stuff again and fled up north. And? Later, when he came back to look for it, well, he never found it again. And nobody else has, huh? Oh, there's lots of stories, Johnny. But until young Jose Pineda found that chart... And then found the wreck? That's what I'm not sure of. Jackson Price is the only one he told about that chart, swore him to secrecy, at least until Jose himself could dig around a bit. Well, how come you know about it, Doug? Well, Jose equipped himself with all sorts of modern detecting apparatus, some kind of combination of radar, sonar, a new type of mine detector, all sorts of stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Then, early last week, he told Price he thought he'd found something. Yeah? Yeah. Told him he'd be back to Corpus day before yesterday morning at the latest, pick up Price, and the two of them would come down here and dig it up. I see. Go on. Only Jose was worried about something, about the man he bought some of his equipment from, a fellow named uh, Tony Larker, kind of a beachcomber in these parts. He thought maybe this Larker had gotten wise to what he was after? Well, that's what Jackson thought, too. Anyhow... Yesterday morning came, and Jose Pineda still hadn't shown up. Jackson got worried. I don't blame him. So he looked all over for Tony Larkin. Couldn't find him either. That's when he confided in me. He told me that he was coming down here for a look around. Well, did he tell you exactly where? Well, only approximately. So keep an eye out for Price's beach buggy. It's an old Model T that he's rigged up. I sure hope he's all right. He's found Jose okay and... Hold everything. Yeah. Up ahead there on the right, back that big mass of yuccas. Hey, you're right. Now, but you've got good eyes. That's his beach buggy, all right. Hang on, Johnny. Uh, uh, kind of a deep hollow in that sand. Yeah, it's an old treasure hunting spot. Look, Doug. Somebody's working in it. I caught the flash of a shovel. Well, thank goodness. That means that Jackson's okay. Skirt around that big mound on the left. Right. It looks a little smoother over there. Yeah. No sooner said than done. Hang on. 
that. Hey, you were right. This is a lot better. It's a better approach to that hollowed-out spot, too. Only, what's happened to Jackson? Where is he now? Well, his buggy's still there. Slow down a minute, Doug. Shouldn't Jose Panetta's car be out here, too? Yeah, you're right. You sure it was Jackson in that hollow? Well, who else could it have been? Well, why did he duck out of sight when he saw it's coming? I don't like the looks of this. Hey, hey, he's shooting at us. Let's get out of this thing and around the back of him. Way ahead of you. Listen, that, that bullet through the windshield was too close for comfort. Wait a minute. I can just reach that old 30-30 in the back without making a target of myself. There it is. Be careful, will you? Stay down. Johnny. I, I, I don't get it. I'm afraid I do. That isn't Jackson pulling off those shots. Well, it certainly isn't Jose Pineda. I know that he would. Larker. Tony Larker. Sure. If there really is all that treasure out here, if Jose and Jackson found it, and if Larker found that out... Where are they, then, Jose and Jackson? Let's just hope they're still alive. <laughs> And oh, what a beautiful flavor. Oh, what a beautiful flavor. In new instant tender leaf tea. Just take a spoonful of instant tender leaf. One. Add cold tap water. Two. Load it with ice. Three. You've made iced tea. New instant tender leaf is 100% pure tea. Richer, brighter, livelier tea. It's made right from the juices of ripe young tea leaves. Instant tender leaf brand. Make a pitcher full. Easy as one, two, three. You've made iced tea and oh, what a beautiful flavor in new instant tender leaf tea. What we do, Johnny? With only a couple of sand dunes and a few Spanish dagger plants between us, we're like sitting ducks for Larker. As long as we don't get out from behind this jeep. Hey, that one hit one of the tires, you hear it? Yeah. There's another one. All right, Doug, if he wants to play at war, we can too. You mean try to shoot it out with him? Uh, first of all, if I can reach one of these shovels in the back, we'll dig ourselves in. Huh? Then sit here and wait for darkness, which isn't too far away now. Yeah, and then? Well, there are two of us, Doug. Maybe if we handle it right, we can surround him. You uh, feeling brave, old boy? Johnny, I'm just as scared as you are. Okay, then. Let's map out our plan of action. We didn't have to wait for dark. Old Mother Nature suddenly stepped in and gave us a hand with one of the quickest, windiest, wettest thunderstorms that ever came up out of the Gulf. Doug and I separated them. He with that 30-30 rifle, me with the only handgun that I always carry. In the darkness, he circled wide to the right, firing an occasional shot in the hope of drawing the fire and the attention of Larker, there in the protection of that big hollow in the sand. Most of the light now came from the lightning, and I ran and stumbled over the dunes through the clumps of yucca. Then as I got close, got down in my belly, and I was about to make the sneak into the hollow. Oh, no! Johnny! Johnny! Larker's got away! Oh, I heard him take off and fright his car. The only thing we can do is go back to our buggy and... Those oh. tires. Yeah. How are we going to get... Hey, Johnny, look. Did you see them? Two of them down there in the hollow. Come on. Jackson. Johnny. Jack, Jack. What happened to you? That bullet creased on the top of your head. Larker. All right, Jackson. Take it easy now. But Jose... Jose? Yes, I see. Judging by those bullet holes, one in the chest and one in the head. It was Larker. Yeah. Looks like a murder case now. But what happened, Jess? I met... met Jose on the road. His car had broken down early this morning. That was the one we passed a couple of miles back, John. Yeah. I should have recognized. Go on, Jackson. When he found, found the treasure, 
who was on his way back to get me and some shovels and... and... He found the treasure here in this hollow? No. I don't know where he found it. But that's when we saw Larker prowling around, keeping an eye on us. So to throw Larker off the track, you and Jose started digging around here in this hollow. Yeah. Huh? But then Larker came up to us with a gun. He shot Jose and I... I guess this one on my head knocked me out. I don't remember anything until you came. All right, Jackson. Now, one thing, Jackson, before we got out here. Do you know where Jose found the treasure? Well, that's something he's going to tell to me. What? Larker. I oh, know. Watch it, boys. Just drop those guns in the sand. Johnny, you better do it, Doug. Well, okay. So I fooled you, huh? Taking that buggy away from here and then coming back on foot. So you fooled us. Well, too bad, boys. The both of you. So now I gotta kill you. The both of you. Mark, you listen to me. You listen. Price is gonna stay alive long enough to tell me where his pal Jose found the treasure. I know it ain't here because I dug down and looked for it. Mark, if you think for You'll one minute... You'll tell me all right. After you've laid out here in the sun for a couple of days. Did I say that I know where it is? What are you trying to bluff? Now just shut up. But you two, the both of you are gonna die. You ready? Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, no. You want it first, huh? Okay, you're going to get it right now. Obi! What? Stay away, Obi! Who are you? What are you doing? Uh, uh, don't try this. Oh, and this. Uh. Grab the gun, Doug. Oh, you bet I will. Oh, Obi. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's a pleasure, Johnny. Whatever brought you sneaking up on us in the rain this way? Well, doggone, I told you guys you should have let me come out here with you. <laughs> I had a terrible time tailing along in my other car without you seeing oh, me. Oh, Obi, Obi, you did all right. Yeah, but what do I get for all my trouble? Soaked to the skin and a handful of sore knuckles. <laughs> Oh, that locker's tough, Johnny. Well, he's not nearly as tough as the sentence he's going to serve. The treasure? I'm afraid the secret of its location, there on Padre Island, died with Jose Panetta. Unless, of course, somebody happens to find out where he hid away the chart. But you can bet your bottom dollar there'll be plenty of people looking for it. Maybe even Jack Price and Obi O'Brien. As for Doug, he says he's had enough of it. Expense account total, including a suit of clothes for Obi and a couple of new tires for his Jeep, 485 bucks even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. suffer a touch of arthritis or rheumatism, and you've never tried mentholatum deep heating rub, you can't know how good its deep heating action can make you feel. As you massage it into painful areas, you feel its deep heating action. You know relief is on its way. Mentholatum deep heating rub is an extra strong combination of active ingredients for safe, temporary relief of minor arthritic rheumatic pain. Use greaseless, stainless, mentholatum deep heating rub often. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, one of the dirtiest rackets I've ever had to deal with. To say nothing of the man behind it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone. Produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Louis Van Ruten as Doug, Larry Haynes as Tony, Maurice Tarplin as Price, and Lawson Zerby as Opie. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking.